Hello, everybody. How are you, Sandra? I am really well. Thank you, Roz. How are you doing? Good, good. Um, it's night time. We're recording at night and I'm secretly in my pyjamas, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Can I tell you a funny story? Just this bit. Oh, this bit. <laughs> Go, I tell have, me, um, and then I'll introduce I you. <laughs> about pyjamas. I'm so sorry for starting so randomly. But because I have a... Um, a a group that I'm part of that's based in the UK and so and we have a weekly book club that we do and yeah. um, to make the time zone work it's actually at 5 a.m for me oh, once a week and yeah. so I set my alarm clock for 50 get out of bed put a jumper on over my pajamas <laughs> make a cup of tea and join our weekly book club so I'm you know all what? about um, being in your pajamas <laughs> 100%, you know, I just think that is one upside of, you know, the crazy world we've been living in as well, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I feel like I really need to introduce you. So um, welcome, Sandra, to our Spotlight series. Um, so this is the beautiful Sandra Gale, everyone. And Sandra Gale is based in Adelaide. Um, I was going to say Adelaide, Victoria, which is just going to confuse everyone. Adelaide, South Australia. Um <laughs> Sandra's business is called, is, is called Sandra Gale Studios. Is that right? Yeah, Sandra Gale Studio. No, it's in the All right, Sandra Gale Studio. <laughs> um, and Sandra does lots of beautiful things. And so I thought I had to invite her on um, so we could talk. Um, recently, I bought from Sandra this. This one? Is it, look, is it facing uh-huh. forward now? It's it is. Right yeah, it good. is. Oh. This is amazing so what is this one called again is this Uh, that one is creative creative abundance um spring blossoms it is so good like the scent like it's pretty right it's gorgeous but also it smells amazing and i just want more so anyway we're gonna strike up a wholesale deal sandra (laughs) amazing i'm so all about that that would be awesome so anyway I'll stop yapping and making a fool out of myself um (laughs) would you like to tell our beautiful viewers a little bit about you and your art practice and what you do yeah so um I um sorry so many ums there as I'm getting started (laughs) I am an I I trained as an illustrator so I um studied visual communication and um majored in illustration and I um my my vision like I guess I kind of I feel like I'm going to talk about changing pathways of Mm. is yeah and so um, my vision when I was doing that was that I well first of all I did it because I was going to do graphic design and then I discovered when I um was was doing the course that there was an option for illustration I was like oh hello this sounds really interesting and so I applied for the illustration program and um got into that and so um and then my goal then was that I was going to do um, children's books and mm-hmm. that was so all of the work I produced through uni was all about getting a portfolio together for doing children's book illustration and um, then I graduated and did a couple of um, children's books with a uh, um, book publisher in Adelaide who do um, re- school readers and um, and then yeah then I was um, procrastinating and um and I apply, saw this job come up and I applied for it and I finished up getting a job as an in-house illustrator for a um, greeting card and gift company. And mm-hmm. so I um, finished up working for them as an in-house illustrator for 14 years. Oh, and, wow. Um, so you were doing their yeah. books for 14 years. Oh, this was in-house. No, this was not children's book illustration and this was gifts. So I was doing Oh, so the cards. next one. Okay, sorry, I'm following. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you did the greeting yeah. cards for 14 years after that. Okay. And so, and so yeah, and then, um, and that's kind of where my, um, the packaging and product, putting art onto products comes from, is that mm-hmm. I spent 14 years doing, creating art and then going, what can we put this art on? How can we? get the best bang for buck from this piece of artwork and so it was going okay we're going to do a greeting card we're going to do a calendar we're going to do journals we're going to do what else can we do and just going you know going wide and thinking about and that's also how I learned um about how the wholesaling industry works as well Mm -hmm. so yes yeah that was from from because it was you know working for a a small um or an Adelaide-based um a company and so it was you know we were a small team and it was very all hands-on um there that we were all involved in 
so many different parts of, of how yeah. the business worked. So that's very um, you know, educational, just- you know, like one, somebody raised um, in conversation recently with me, the impact of this whole working from home thing. Um, and one of those impacts being just imagine finishing uni or your studies and starting out in a career and everyone's working from home. Like where do you do your learning and how do you, how do you learn from people who are experienced that because they're working from home? Anyway, I just thought that, yeah, you just made me think. Of yeah, that. so that's really, great. That's you a really learn. interesting question as well, because, you know, in that context of like, we would be, you know, in terms of me learning about talking to retailers, because mm. we would be all answering the phones, like just because, you know, I'm an illustrator or designer, it doesn't mean that if the phone's ringing, that I won't pick up the phone because mm. nobody, you know, none of us want to leave our customers hanging. So. Um, so yeah, I would have lots of conversations with our customers and taking, you know, taking payments and doing all of those sort of things. And so yeah, it's a really interesting question of of how how that yeah happens how they learn. Pandemic. And you think but, and you think in a business. So I I do have a couple of people that help me in my business, but I wouldn't call them quite staff yet, like employees. Um, but when you, you would think if you had people in your business filling roles that they would have very specific, like narrow roles and you know but the approach you're describing sounds really good for people's growth and learning yeah yeah anyway, so it was it was amazing yeah so it was an awesome an awesome place to work and mm. it was an absolutely beautiful team and the owners and founders of the, of the company are um they're all about inspiration and all about making a difference in the world and so um and they infuse that into everything they do so mm. um you know, roll on pandemic and, you know, mm. everything being turned upside down. Um, I, after working in that role, creating kind of one type of work for so many years, I was kind of, you know, I suddenly had it like, as, as we all did at the start of the pandemic, had a whole bunch of time on my hands. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I'd also was at a point in my life where I was kind of in a change. And so my daughter was at, um, the start of year 11 at the start of pan- the pandemic and um and so I was kind of seeing that this was an coming to an end of an era for me that my season of, of being you know a school mum mm. was almost over mm. and um and so it was kind of in a process of self-exploration and going you know who I who am I who like what do I like doing like what even like I don't even know what my hobbies are are they like mm. driving my car <laughs> Like, like to soccer is, and then to ballet yes. and then to <laughs> is that that's all I do I, <laughs> I'm so not looking forward to it I've been given the heads up by many many mums <laughs> like so much time in the car and so much time sitting and waiting as well mm. of like where you're just like you're just sitting around <laughs> and um I'm not gonna do it and, Sandra I'm just oh. not <laughs> And you know what? Well, I'm not everybody. Like, like honestly, not everybody does. Some people are way way better at boundaries than I am. And oh. so, um, uh-huh. I'm just like, yeah, you should totally do that. Like every single thing that she was like, oh, I want to do this. I'm like, okay, cool. Oh, okay, what a we good can fit mom. it in. We can fit it in. Well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like no, let's not. Anyway, that was the version that I rolled. Um, and so, but yeah, but anyway, I was kind of just like going, oh, what do I, you know, where am I at? And so I, um, you know started finding a whole bunch of courses online as you know much as we all do especially not, during yeah as we all lockdowns. yeah <laughs> like yeah and so um and um started exploring and creating and just I did um the 100 day project or started doing the 100 day project mm. and pushing myself to create something new and mm. and just be doing doing something creative every day and something mm. that was not for work that this was just me creating something that was for fun and that was going if I'm making just just trying to like refine my style again because I was so immersed in Mm. what I was doing for work that trying to find who I am was was yeah what you wanted to express and you know yeah 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 what your colors and colors were and the subject matter that you're passionate about and the process as well 
Yeah. And so, mm. and like when I was at uni, I loved doing collage. Like I was super influenced by Eric Carle, like the Hungry Caterpillar. Yes. Yeah, 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 and yeah. Um, I loved, you know, that cut paper thing. And it was, yeah, a really fun way of working for me that, you know, helped me to kind of loosen up and not get, yeah, it was um, not get worried about perfection. And I feel um, like he's almost the Henry Matisse of the book illustration world. <laughs> Don't you think he's like one of the founders of that particular style? Oh, very much so. Yeah, yeah I like think I so. Like everybody see. that loves collage would refer back to being like Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Or one of his, you know, one of his books at least. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so that was, um, yeah. And so then, yes, yeah, so I started doing, um, yeah, doing collage again, like, mm-hmm. yeah, cutting cutting out shapes and glue and I had so much fun doing it it was yeah really really fun and then yeah I kind of it just kind of evolved mm. from 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 there, there of doing so it's sort yeah, of from yeah the finding yourself piece like I think that a lot of our viewers would really relate to that because I do find that there's a lot of people that come back to art you know at those sort of transformations sort of periods of their life um Yeah, and to sort of realise, oh, hang on, that's something that I used to enjoy. Maybe I still, you know, could still enjoy it now as well. Um, Yeah, yeah, very relatable. Yeah, Yeah, I think it is. I think it's, yeah, a lot of people. And it's curious, yeah, and it's interesting for me because I've actually always been doing it as well. So it's not even like I ever stopped being creative, but it was just Mm. that I was being creative in somebody else's style. And so it was. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, finding, yeah, finding my own voice, I think, yeah, was, yeah. and, but yeah, it's an in- interesting phase of life, though. I, I really think where you suddenly are going, like, I'm looking for a new identity of, mm-hmm. I like this, my, and having the ability to be selfish with your time as well. I mm. think that's, um, is, is something that, is an absolute luxury and but Mm. also hard to get your head around as well and you have to be really intentional about being Mm. selfish with your time because after so long of taking care of other people Mm -hmm. it's like no I don't have to actually um be the boss of making dinner for everybody like yeah take care of themselves <laughs> but that and that's hard after years of being used to that like I yeah. I still I'm really embarrassed to say but I still help my youngest child to get dressed and I know she can do it funnily enough she so she's five I know that she could she could actually dress herself before my eldest could dress herself for various reasons um she was just that type of personality but now it's just that she wants me to help her. So she's playing the baby card and I'm just like, yes, it's just quicker. <laughs> it's less dramatic. Uh, but, yeah, like just letting go of that as well, like it, I can imagine is quite a big thing and saying, no, you're cooking your own dinner. You can you can do it. Yeah. And not yeah, letting that so guilt been, get to you, you know. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that has well been. Well done, you. Um, yeah, well, it's, not, it's a work in progress. Like, let's not pretend mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra's aced it. If you need any parenting tips, no. <laughs> just yeah, like just dominating, up. like, you know, <laughs> practically perfect Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Sandra and I chat um, outside of, you know, recording land. Um, and I actually do respect Sandra a lot. And she's, she's gorgeous and so down to earth and humble. So she's, she's, yeah. It's okay. I do I do actually believe you're Mary Poppins just telling you, just you know. Just so you know. <laughs> no, you're adorable. Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. So you've had a journey. So it's the pandemic that sort of pushed you into yeah. exploring art in the context of you, I suppose, or exploring mm-hmm. you in the context of art, both ways, you know. Yeah, maybe both of both of those things. But yeah, mm-hmm. like I think it was just the it was probably the time that I needed and the push as well of like mm-hmm. there was, and then the kind of that flood of information. And it probably is that thing of like, you know, when you're looking for information, it comes to you mm-hmm. as well. And so, mm-hmm. you know, like the algorithm gives you what you want. And so mm-hmm. I was then, you know, flooded with, with so many suggestions of, you know, of, of, of like trying different, um, different ways of doing art and different, different things and, and yes, different, yeah. um, 
forms of creativity, creative expression. And, Mm -hmm. um, and, and I probably still, because when I, you know, when I graduated from uni, my plan was always to work for myself. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to have even like one of the, my, for my final project at uni, um, even though I was studying illustration, I actually chose for my final project at uni to build a website, Mm. which back then was not nearly as easy as it is now. Like there was no like drag and drop. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I what did you use? I swear I, using, I did something like that years ago. I was whatever I was using. It was part of the creative suite back then, oh. and so it was like one of the worst programs I could have chosen. But I had it available. <laughs> it was horrible, and I could never one change the, it because I didn't. Was it? It was, was a dream something. Yeah, that, it was before that's... Adobe bought Dreamweaver, so it was whatever oh. Adobe had. Oh, before. so Adobe at that point, Adobe didn't mm. own Dreamweaver. They had something different. Okay, and then, um, yeah, and then I got a new computer. Didn't have the software for it anymore. Had no way of changing it. So my mm. old website, and until I um, took it down and actually have now redirected it to my current website, but. Mm-hmm. It was just an embarrassment for so many years because I couldn't change it and it had like all my uni projects. <laughs> yeah. So are you on Shopify um, now? I use Squarespace. Oh, so, do you? Yeah. That's so funny. which I don't I'm know. I'm not very good at these things, but like I looked at uh, your website obviously and I thought it looked like a Shopify website. But oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So I'm um, such yeah, a no, pro. I'm so such a pro at websites, <laughs> evidently. <laughs> Anyway, all right. So you made your own website. Yeah. So, so that was, um, yes, I did that a long time. But yeah. So that was kind of um, because I wanted to have my own business. Mm-hmm. So, and so coming back, so it was kind of this, even though I was just mucking around and playing, at mm-hmm. the back of my mind, there was still this kind of um, desire that I, that I really wanted to have my own business and do, you know, tell my own story, do my own thing. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so whilst maybe not consciously that I wasn't intentionally building towards that, mm-hmm. probably unconsciously I was. And then it kind of all came to, um, all came to, a, I guess, the that it, it was kind of, I don't know what the word is, the impetus or, or the kind of the... Yeah, that there was the moment. The moment. The, moment. <laughs> the, moment was, <laughs> the, the ultimate transformation. My magical, <laughs> my magical moment was I'd been um I'd been mucking around on Procreate as I'm sure so many of, of your listeners do. And mm. um and I'd been playing with the kind of um playing around with letter like doing um hand lettering on Procreate and doing kind of like some swirling 70s lettering. And mm. I did um uh this um kind of 70s love is all you need lettering and shared it on Instagram and I'd been sharing a bunch of work on Instagram and um but this was the first time that I had all these comments saying oh I want Mm. this on a t-shirt I want this on a t-shirt I want this on a t-shirt and I was like wow "Wow." Mm. nobody's ever said that before yeah (laughs) okay I'm gonna start maybe I will (laughs) and find out how to put art on a t-shirt yeah beautiful um yeah so that was how it all it all started that I um, and, and then because I was going to do drop shipping mm-hmm. and, um, but then the colors that I had, and I thought that I'd chosen a company that were men, that were like doing it in Australia, mm. but, um, the challenge was the colors that I had chosen were not available in Australia. They were all oh. then printed overseas. Mm. And so I'm like, oh man, so that doesn't really work for drop shipping because, if people want to buy it, they have to wait like three weeks. And, you know, in yes. the middle of the pandemic, it could be like six weeks for it to arrive yeah. from the US. Yeah. So I'm like, that's, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say what I was thinking. <laughs> that was <PPP>. That's rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's not, it's, so, it's not good in terms of a, like a customer service point of view. So, so I have so, as what well, I'm sure a lot of other creatives as well who are listening have as well. Sorry. It's, um, that my art on society six and that Mm. I think is primarily states based. And so, yes, people can buy things through there and yes, it arrives to them, but there's a wait. And I think like, whilst you can say that's because it's made in the U S and it does say when you purchase that it will be a three week wait, it's still not a nice experience for your customers. 
you know, even though yeah. they know what they're getting themselves in for. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I hear you. You need that. You need, yeah. you do need a fast turnaround. And it is nice to keep it in Aussie as well, you know. Yes. Yeah, so that was, yeah. So that was kind of the challenge that I came up in that kind mm. of first, in that first run that I did. But I, um, to kind of, I was with, I had an awareness as well of kind of going, oh, if this did kind of become a thing, mm. I want to make sure that I can keep my prices to work so that I can do a wholesale markup. Mm-hmm. So I was super mindful of pricing for a wholesale margin as mm-hmm. well as, um, and then to keep it affordable that it was, you know, and kind of, I was like, oh, how can I make this, you know, something that people will value so I kind of went I'm like oh these are gonna be limited edition I'm mm-hmm. just gonna have a you know a cutoff number of the amount that I'm gonna do and I will take pre-orders for them mm-hmm. and then I'll order them all in bulk and get them over here and then mm-hmm. I'll ship them from Australia so everybody knew they were pre-ordering yes and yeah. um and then th- that way they knew that it was you know pre-order now for delivery in whenever it was yeah okay and um, so you sort of manage so, their expectations essentially yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and so and then I kind of and then I ordered some extras as well just kind of thinking you know as well hopefully yeah, people might buy well. them <laughs> but yeah, yeah then I, um, and how do you go like how do you go with having stock around home because I always joke about not home but your you know your work so I always joke about having me having a an uh, like allergy to stock I don't know why I feel like it's a problem do you have a problem with that or are you okay with having <laughs> because you need to have stock I just I realized my allergy is silly because if I want empty shelves at home then if someone orders something that I don't have anything there and then I am basically asking for stress because then I have to hurry up and order some and be anxious about their <laughs> Anyway, talk to me. <laughs> yeah, so um yes, I have um I have stuff everywhere. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's um and so we've just yeah, I'm I'm on a constant quest to try and tidy things up and find find space and find a way to to, to make it all all work. I don't mm. know whether I should do this or not. I know I've got. Oh, <laughs> so give us a the angle. I was going to change the angle of my. No, <laughs> it's okay. Don't sure. worry. But don't I'm, worry. I'm not going to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. Um, and, but and yeah, I think... I've got stuff everywhere. I've got in our hallway, I've got um, clothes racks with mm. T-shirts and jumpers hanging them on them in our hallway. Mm. So you walk into my home, you're going to be walking past, a, um, you know, like a retail display of yeah. Of course, uh, <laughs> beautiful. Well, lucky your stuff is so colourful and gorgeous. Imagine if it know, wasn't. Right? Imagine if it was some other industry. I don't know. School. I know. Like if you were selling, like, <laughs> oh yeah, school supplies. Mm. I had a whole bunch of school socks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, or like ratchets or something. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, know. I don't exactly. even know what a ratchet is. <laughs> Did you say ratchet? Um, Ratchet. I don't know. Yeah, I think a ratchet yeah. is like a, a spanner. A screwdri- a spanner think, thingy, yeah. I think it's an American name, maybe. Yeah. For a I don't know. That was like the most random <laughs> thing that I could think of. <laughs> random screwdriver. Well, we know it's a tool <laughs> and, and tools sorry, are but yes, not and I, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, um, it is a challenge. And I would, you know, as a cautionary tale for people that are looking at going down this path, I would offer that it does take up a lot of space and then mm. it is um financially I have a lot of money tied up in stock as well so mm. it is something that you need to if you're going to go into it like go into it with your eyes open and, and have mm. um have some money behind you because mm. it certainly is um yeah it's it's super frustrating when I kind of like look at you know that stock that's sitting in my hallway going mm. oh my god so, so what is <laughs> what's the challenge with that do you think do you think it's just mindset because yeah. that's the same that's how I see it right so I I have a couple of art mugs okay so I have my, like a couple of mug designs with my art on them I think they're really pretty I don't sell many of them and so I have them sitting on a shelf here, like in a plastic tub. So they're dust free. It's organized enough. <laughs> um, and <laughs> but when I see them, that's my mindset. That's my thoughts. I'm like, I haven't sold those yet. That's what I 
that's what I say to myself, right? So the focus is on mm. the negative. I haven't sold them mm. yet. And, you know, why haven't I sold them? Da, 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 da. But then that's not very helpful because you need the stock if you're going to sell it. Yes. Do you have the same, you know, so you're saying you're saying a similar thing really. Yeah. Like it's, and, and so, no, I would go, it's, um, is having the balance of, of going, of being aware of um, your um, sales forecasts, mm. which, you know, in a new business is is tricky because you're kind of making stuff up, but you've got no idea what you're going to sell and what's going to happen. I think it's, ah, oh, I'm going to sell. No, and five. so, <laughs> yeah, like it's, and so it really is a bunch of guesswork, but I try and, you know, I'll try and look back now after kind of, you know, that I'm coming up to nearly 12 months. Mm. And so I kind of, you know, I'll go, oh, I'm doing a trade fair. I'll expect to get this many new customers. I'll expect this many orders. I'm going to need this much stock to mm. fulfill that. And then I want to add like, say, 20% to that just in case or 30% to it or whatever, just in case I go, oh, you know, in case something amazing happens and I get way yeah. more than I was expecting. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, so it's kind of trying to, so I guess that's like the whole thing, which is the challenge then of going mm. from, you know, being an artist for fun and mm-hmm. and just mucking around and going this is so so lovely and relaxing and nice and I'm mm-hmm. just enjoying this so much to then going this is now a business and this is my job and mm-hmm. it's so many parts of running a business that are really time consuming and mm-hmm. really challenging to learn and so yeah like stock control and forecasting is um super tricky <laughs> totally <laughs> but but yes I do kind of go it, it is part of it and I do mm. yes I don't have an issue with having things in stock because I mm. expect if I don't have things in stock I panic yeah because that's like, right it's better to so, have yeah so I'm like no that's okay I know that I've got these here and this is my mm-hmm. plan that I'm gonna hopefully I will sell through this by Christmas mm-hmm. and then I'll do a reorder in January and yes um that's that kind of that kind of process of yeah Mm. so it's like yeah so rather than that kind of you know when I walk past all of the you know t-shirts and jumpers in the hallway it's not like Mm. I'm going oh why haven't I sold this it's like oh who can I sell it to yeah that's (laughs) a good way to look at it so it's the same thing it's like where are the yeah and and using that as a motivator and also like a inspiration like you know how to get your inspiration for ways to sell them yeah yeah beautiful now I'm sort of thinking that a couple of our listeners or viewers might not even know what your art looks like. So I did give you all like a little sneak peek before. Oh. So like Sandra's artwork is super duper colourful and it's all collage work. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And largely portraits? Mainly portraits, yeah. And then I have um some, yeah, ma- mainly, yeah. I probably like really do do a lot of women that that's kind of what I like. Yeah. Oh, what I like drawing. So yeah, mainly mainly portraits, and then I have some big big kind of words as well, like some kind of yeah, like motivational sort of yeah, you know, of empowerment, uplifting, inspiring yeah. words. Yeah, kind of yes. Just, yeah. So if yeah, our viewers, pretty- sorry, I'm just making sure everyone knows how beautiful your art is. Um, if you like colorful art and uplifting and positive and motivation, you know that sort of really vibrant um art, then definitely take a look at Sandra's website because she's got everything on there and she creates just amazing beautiful art and and is also a great example as we were talking about of getting your art onto a range of products because that might be something that some of our viewers are interested in doing themselves as as well um so what what would you if you had some advice for our viewers who are watching who are wanting to you know make money out of their art what could you suggest? Because you've obviously done that by essentially diversifying your range. Mm. So you have your artworks and then now you have it on products as well. Is that Would you suggest that to others or do you have other ideas? Mm, that's a really good question. And so, like, I think that, um, yeah, some of the things that you've um, talked about of doing, the, the kind of the drop shipping. Mm thing of whatever you know whether you do like society six or you do it yourself through something like printful or printify or one of Mm -hmm. those one of those places um i think that that's a good way of doing it without having without having a big um financial investment of Mm -hmm. 
because I think that if you're going to go down the, like I said, if you're going to go down the path that I've gone down, you have to, I, I like I've spent a lot of our savings on, like I kind of, you know, this, when I started doing this, we had money that we saved to go overseas and it was yeah. like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> can't over. go anywhere at the moment. So <laughs> <laughs> let's give this a go then. So that was yeah. kind of, you know, the, the mindset was like, oh, well, you know, so I kind of basically spent our um, overseas holiday on, yes um, on setting everything on, up on, on doing this um mm-hmm. which and you know and and like and I would probably also add that it's been one of those things that has at different stages been eating away at me inside of that mm-hmm. um but then I've um which I've, I've talked to you before about that I have um my sister-in-law does my bookkeeping mm-hmm. for me and um my um my brother and her husband my brother-in-law um has worked in um uh different big companies and um has worked and and so he has a different vision of how Mm -hmm. a business should be running and so he's kind of like looked at what I've invested and he sees that as being entirely reasonable and he's he's Mm -hmm. like well no that's what you've got to do and and he's like no you've set yourself up really well your business is completely scalable if you had somebody come along to you from david jones and said you know we want to place this order Mm -hmm. you've got systems in place that you could actually scale to do that like you're you're fine and and so yeah yeah, it's a good mindset to get that kind of and which i think i'm I'm not sure who other people have talked about that of like whether you have you know that kind of i forget which mindset but a mind I don't know whether it's hobbyist or whatever versus a mm. CEO mindset and having mm. that CEO mindset. And so, yes, yes. And yeah. making room for that because I think that's what I, I have a lot of problems with and I'm sure a lot of other people do is when you're just so busy just doing all the things that it's really hard to stop and look back and take that sort of, um, you know, bird's eye view of things. Yeah. 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 But so, but putting on products, like the simplest thing to do is greeting cards, like without mm-hmm. a doubt. I, mm-hmm. I think that's, um, is, would be would be easy and you could try that fairly simply mm-hmm. with um having a chat with your local your local printer and I would even go that you don't have like because lots of people talk about going to like Vistaprint and all of those ones you kind of see online on you know on the internet or whatever mm-hmm. but if you actually you know being that we're all small businesses if you mm-hmm. actually google printer near me and you find your local print shop and go into your local printer and they're probably like a small family run business Mm -hmm. and have a chat with them and talk to them about what you're wanting to do. You'll actually find there'll be, I would be super surprised if they're not actually incredibly helpful and can give you some really great advice and they'll be able to actually help you out with, you know, choosing different paper stocks. And so, you know, if you go to Vista print, you just get whatever they give you. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, maybe you have a choice of three papers. Whereas if you go and have a chat to, somebody who printing is actually their craft yes then yeah, you'll, yeah. um you know and, and, and you get and a better quality outcome as well yeah and, and, and so, more predictable <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely mm. and then you get somebody who you can ring like my the printer that I you know I, I use a, a couple I've got a couple of different printers in Adelaide that I use for different products I don't use because not everybody does they're not all the best for the different things yes but um but you know, I can ring my printer because I have a relationship with them and be like, mm. oh my God, I've, you know, of that thing of like keeping stock. Sometimes I do muck up mm. and, you know, go, oh my God, I, you know, run out of this thing and I forgot to order it. And so yes. I ring the printer. I'm like, oh my God, I, you know, I've made a terrible mistake. I need this <laughs> yeah, like tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is there any chance you can? And they're like, yeah, I had, you know, like, I had a similar yeah. experience this last week and actually a new printer that I'm using for my fine art prints to save the day. They're like, yep, we can do it. We'll do it. <laughs> I'm like, thank oh. you so much. You know, it's, it's those relationships um, that just matter a lot. I think, you know, supporting other small businesses is really rewarding, but also forming relationships where, you know, you help each other out both ways. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really, really rewarding. And so- and I think, and I think it's also that thing of like then, when you don't need it in a hurry, mm. to be able to say to them, "This is not, you know, yes. this is yes. this is my time frame for this. I don't need yeah. this for like a month. So yeah. you've got plenty of time 
you know, so if you need, you know, if you get another urgent job, it's okay to push this one back. Uh, like, and then they don't associate yeah. you with emergencies. Is that what you mean? <laughs> I'm trying really hard oh, no, to do that. Woman. I know. I think that I, st- I am actually still that emergency kind of person. <laughs> I think you and I are similar. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I don't know what other what other thing. I mean, doing the the candles have been amazing. That's mm-hmm. been an awesome product. And so for me, um, as a wholesale product, that's been my most successful product mm-hmm. for wholesaling. Um, and that people do, yeah, people love. I have a, because they're quite different to what's around mm-hmm. the place at the moment. Like. Um, there are other colourful candles, but there aren't, you know, with the portraits and yes, with yeah. um, with my packaging on the back of the box. There's a, you know, there's a special compliment on the back of the box. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's it's a an lot experience, of, and it's yeah. and there's meaning to it as well. It's not just here's here. I mean, I've I've given a fair few candles in my life, but it's not just here's a candle that smells nice. There's another layer on top of that. Yeah. So um, so I think mm. people have yeah. So people that have connected with that and connected mm. with the story and um yeah that's that's been so yeah that's been a really great product and mm. I started off with a friend of mine was doing the candle pour for me with that but mm-hmm. then um she's so yeah my whole story has been kind of around COVID so she's, yeah. <laughs> she's, a, she's, a, she's a flight attendant and so she was yes. grounded uh-huh. and um, so she had time on her hand mm. to to be doing the candles and then um you know she started flying again and it wasn't quite um, serving her to be making yes. candles as well yes. as having to be, you know, take care of her family and um, be flying. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, so she was like, oh, that's okay. I can teach you how to do them. And so. Um, that's great. Yeah, so, and what a skill. So, yeah, so she's taught me and, and, and my daughter. And so, so yeah, so Emily, my daughter, actually makes all the candles. Oh, so, that's great. Um, yeah, yeah. So then that would Good. then be um, where I say we've got stock everywhere and Addison <laughs> is also covered in <laughs> candle jars and the candle pot. Yeah, all the- <laughs> yeah. But that's that's, good, <laughs> that's like us, we've got paint everywhere. I don't think I have a single article of clothing without, like, <laughs> <laughs> paint on it and as you know tub in the house as well without paint um all right well thank you for sharing you know some of your thoughts around getting your art onto products and where to start with that um and how to support as well other you know small businesses um I wanted to ask you a couple more things and then we might wrap up so I want to ask how can people find out more about you Okay, so um, the best way would be to head to my website. So it's sandragalestudio.com, no A-U at the end. And, um, yeah, Gale's G-A-L-E. And, um, yeah, and then you can um, read more about me on the website and see all of my beautiful artwork and, um, yeah, and then sign up for my newsletter. I send out a fortnightly newsletter with um, different um, bits and pieces of what's happening, what markets I'm at, where new stockers, interesting things around the studio and um yeah and then I also have some um free posters that you can download as well when you sign up for my mailing list too beautiful Um, and I've heard they're really good ones they are super positive so I've just had a real I just had a real go out with showing the um hand cutting the lettering for stronger than you think so that one people people have really really liked that and it's been lovely getting photo people sending in photos of where they've printed it out and then they've put yeah. it in a frame and they've put it in their kids room or Aww. teachers have printed it out and put it up in their classroom and so beautiful I just love that so much yeah I love yeah. knowing that it's inspiring young people so yeah. yeah and you know listeners you just need to be around Sandra and all the beautiful positivity that she sends out so definitely go have a snoop at her stuff and hop on her mailing list and grab that free freebie as well um and do you have anything exciting coming up because I heard rumors about um, maybe an exhibition coming up, maybe some workshops for next year or something like that. Is yes. this true? So this is true, <laughs> Roz. Yes. <laughs> so I'm planning an exhibition for November. I still need to um, to lock in quite a few details for that. But, um, yeah, I um, think that I work best with external motivation and so I really want to get some new artwork together and whilst it's been fabulous being immersed in business growth and learning yeah. all of these business skills. I 
started doing this because I want to make art. (laughs) And so I'm going, a November deadline for an exhibition is going to get my butt into gear and I will be coming out with a whole bunch of new work. And um, yeah, so that will, so if you're in Adelaide in November, um, get on my mailing list and you'll get the dates and um, and come along and um, meet me and see my work. Talking about external motivation, if you would definitely like Sandra to put on a show, send her a DM over on Instagram. <laughs> and say, I know, right? Show, please, Sandra. <laughs> that would be so cool. Oh, my God. I would love that. <laughs> external motivation. It is, yes. It's like knowing who you are in that sense is actually really powerful. So, you know, not calling yourself any any of the negative things because I I like a bit of external motivation as well and historically I would just say oh I'm just sort of procrastinating and all of that but actually no I'm not I just need the I just need the hard deadline and I need someone that's excited about it and then I'll be there sort of thing yeah yeah and I think that is it of just going you just have to like for me that's like that learning of like how my brain works and how I am is like I've got a I have to put it out there mm-hmm. and make make what I want to do public mm-hmm. and then then I will make it happen. Yeah. But, and it's the it's the accountability I think to the uh, to other people as well. Yeah. For some, for yeah. I think you and I are similar in that regard. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's why I really need to get the date. I really need to get a venue booked and a date yeah. booked and so yeah. I'm going to put write that on a post-it note now. And, <laughs> So for tomorrow, great. that's going to be tomorrow morning's job. So, all right, yeah. Watch, if watch you do your send inbox. me a DM, yeah. <laughs> if you do send me a DM on Instagram, <laughs> be expecting a reply back tomorrow with the date and venue booked. <laughs> that's it. So, yeah, I do mean it. So, did you share your Instagram handle? Oh, I can't remember. Did you? <laughs> sorry, no, I did not. So, I'm on Instagram. I'm at um, Sandra Studio. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome, Ross. This is an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Pleasure, pleasure. Let's chat soon. Absolutely. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.